T-shirt is, is from the struggle against Samsung. It symbolizes the Microsoft worker and says, no more deaths in Samsung. Charles has been fighting Samsung for over 10 years, so we have a lot to say about the company. But today, I will specifically discuss human rights violation at Samsung's Vietnam operations focusing on environment, health, and safety issues, and uh, outsourcing of hazardous processes. Uh, I can speak English fast enough, so I put a lot of contents in the documentation rather than my explanation, so I'd appreciate it if you could concentrate on the presentation material. It's the order of presentation. Hazardous chemicals, air pollution, water pollution, outsourcing problem, and summary. Uh, let me talk about the hazardous chemicals used to make cell phones at Samsung's Vietnam factory. We analyzed dozens of chemicals used by Samsung Electronics Army factory and its suppliers and found that all kinds of Health hazard was very high, especially 48% of them were GMR materials. GMR is the most hazardous materials that are carcinogenic, genotoxic, and reproductive toxic. The chemicals used in cell phone factories are no less harmful than those in semiconductor factories. According to the 2017 report by IPAN and CISFED, there were many testimonies from workers about the several severe smell emanating from the factory. More 45 workers interviewed suffered from symptoms such as headaches, dizziness, and fainting, and six mis miscarriages were reported these symptoms are criticized because consistent with the toxic nature of the chemicals used by Samsung. However, at the time, Samsung denied the report. And then, Samsung engaged in inhumane practices that intimidated workers and civil society organizations. UN special rapporteurs have issued statements expressing their concerns. The Vietnamese authorities found no, no problems with Samsung in their investigation that same year. This showed that the Vietnamese government was neither able nor willing to oversee Samsung's EHS issues. Let me tell you about the terrible of that smell at Samsung's Bangling factory for seven years. This is the polluted air treatment facility at the Bangling factory. Polluted air is cleaned by filters and activated carbon. However, this system has a severe design defect due to it. Insufficient capacity. So the paint dust quickly covered the filters and completely blocked the airflow. So Samsung removed the filters and activated carbon. This means that the polluted air would be discharged without any treatment. The bad smell inside the factory was even worse. Painting materials were left unattended, and wastewater was not shielded. There were at least 10 hazardous processes without local ventilation facilities. Workers who use hazardous chemicals are not wearing even masks. Samsung's executives were, were well aware of these issues because the EHS center at the 
headquarters in South Korea and the future strategy office, the top level organization that report to the head of Samsung Group also looked into the issue. When the whistleblower de demanded that the activated carbon be repressed, the local executive replied like this. If we replace it all, what's the profit? The situation did not improve at all until 2016. Let me talk about water pollution. For the, for, for the first four years, the Bangui factory operated without a wastewater treatment facility. There were frequent chemical leaks in chemical storage and throughout the factory facilities. The situation was no different in the Ho Chi Minh factory in 2021. These leaked chemicals flowed into nearby river through drainage systems. The chemical waste water that flowed into the surrounding river contaminated the, the area. Local residents suffered from respiratory disease due to the polluted air from the Bangui factory. Some of them gave up right cultivation and moved to other areas. Similar environmental violations were reported in the United States, over 700,000 gallons of acidic wastewater leaked from Samsung Electronics Texas Austin factory contaminated nearby rivers. There were two such wastewater leakage incidents in 2021. But Samsung's sustainability report for 2022 reports zero environmental violations. This doesn't even reflect incidents that have been reported in the media. So it's unlikely to capture environmental violations that are unknown outside the company. As a result, the EHS section of Samsung's sustainability report looks perfect. Let me discuss the issue of outsourcing toxic problem by Samsung's Technan factories in 2017. In 2019, Samsung reported 25 district materials in its sustainability report. Most were carcinogenic, genotoxic, and reproductive materials, primarily used for cleaning purposes. Eleven of these materials were applied to subcontractors as well. But four of the restrict materials were found to be used by Samsung suppliers. Samsung only manages its suppliers' hazardous materials online, so it's not really managing them at all. In 2016, seven workers as Samsung subcontractors sub in Korea was poisoned by methanol and lost their eyesight. These issues caused wide, widespread concern. Samsung announced that methanol would be restricted. However, earlier this year, 37 workers was poisoned by methanol at Samsung's Vietnamese supplier, HS Tech. At least three teenage workers lost their eyesight. One worker eventually lost her life. The company ignored the workers' complaint that the new current smells terrible. No response from the company even when a worker was hospitalized in a coma. 
the problem only became probably that the workers' family sent a sample of the chemical to a toxicology lab for testing. Korean and international civil society group, including KKNC Watch, had a press conference at Samsung headquarters demanding responsible actions from Samsung, but Samsung has denied responsibility. At the Samsung suppliers, EHS issues continued to arise, but they have not improved. There were a lot of fire protection issues, but they also were not improved. In the end, disaster struck again and again. The lack of improvement in EHS issues was not a barrier to doing business with Samsung. Samsung supplier SIP Dina has not cleaned up the polluted air releasing white paint dust and toxic gases. In recent years, many local residents have been suffering from respiratory disease and lung cancer. SIP Dina is a company that took over Samsung's hazardous processes. This case shows that Samsung outsources hazardous processes and does not take responsibility for the for the risk. This is a summary of today's presentation. The most important part of today's presentation is based on material provided by Samsung's piece blower. The work in Samsung's EHS division for over 40 years, we decided to block the fissure due to concerns about Samsung's lies. In March of this year, a Korean investigative outlet ran a series of reports below. Charles was involved in, in this project. English and Vietnamese subtitles available now and Chinese subtitle will be released soon. I highly recommend watching that. You can see more about it and in these links. In closing, I'd like to say this. As you can see in the picture below, Samsung factories are located all over the world. The electronics industry is all over the world, we have to watch them. If there is a Samsung or any electronics company in your country, they are victims of occupational disease. They are just not easily visible because Samsung or big company is very good at hiding its dirty secret. That's the lesson from Korean experience. We have to uncover and support them we have to hold corporations and governments accountable. Thank you. Are there any other ways to encourage people to, to come out, to, to share uh, what's really happening inside? Because clearly there's a big difference between what's really happening and what's given on paper um, from Samsung Electronics. Thank you.
문서로 확인할 수 있었던 게 가장 큰 차이였고요. 사실 이건 처음 있는 일이었어요. Actually, we have a, um, a long history on um, Samsung workers came out and testify about the, the terrible working conditions inside the Samsung factories. But this time, the whistleblower I mentioned in my presentation was special because he was actually in charge of EHS system in Samsung and he came out with documents uh, supporting his claims about Samsung's violation of um, health and environment safety uh, regulations. And that's why it was special, and that's why we were able to actually prove Samsung violated those regulations with the documents he brought out. So, if you have a special information, 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 10년이 넘는 투쟁을 통해서 이게 사회적 이슈가 되면서 삼성 공장에 대해서 조사가 필요하다라고 하는 이런 사회적 요구가 제기가 됐었고 삼성 반도체 공장, 그다음에 SK 하이닉스 공장에 대해서 전문가들이 안전 산업 안전 보고 전문가들이 이곳을 조사해서 그 결과를 낸 보고서들은 여러 번이 있고요. 사실 그걸 통해서 저희가 작업 환경에 대해서 그동안은 파악을 해왔습니다. Except this um, exceptional case, uh, um, like high level manager came out with the documents. Uh, actually, we had many testimonies from workers, but we are not able to prove what's really happening inside Samsung because we had no like, written proof like documents. Um, but we did have a lot of workers uh, raising their voices and revealing the situation, like giving testimonies about the situation in Samsung, and that actually raised the awareness of the public um, on this issue, and that's how some <coughs> experts in health and safety issues uh, decided to do research and work with the government and other um, CSOs to investigate the situations in Samsung, and that's how we had some research report um, suggesting suspicious um, actions, conditions in Samsung. Um, so without those documents, the written documents proof, it was, it's actually very really difficult to um, uh, like make, raise our claim just um, with testimonies by workers. The 이 외부 전문가들의 조사였기 때문에 삼성의 자료 협조가 부족했었고 그래서 이제 한계가 매우 뚜렷하다 저희가 이런 평가들을 내렸었는데 이번에 이제 내부 고발자의 정보는 확실히 이분이 내부의 문제를 정확하게 알고 그 문서들을 직접 작성하고 관리하고 협력 업체를 관리하고 이렇게 했었던 사람이기 때문에 사실 이제 진짜 문제를 정확하게 파악하는 데는 가장 도움이 됐었고요. 앞으로는 지금 이제 삼성에 드디어 노조가 생기기 시작을 했고 한국에서 그래서 저희가 삼성전자, 삼성 SDI 같은 회사들하고 노동안전법을 실패 이렇게 연구조사 사업을 진행을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이런 걸 통해서 이제 그동안 삼성이 어느 정도 실제 변했는지 뭐 이런 것들에 대해서 저희도 이 집단적 노동자들의 이런 의견들을 확인해 가면서 계속 모니터링을 해나갈 생각입니다. So um, we had no written proof before this um, this special whistleblower came out, uh, but uh, we had to rely on outside experts' research, doing research from outside of the company. But this time, this special um, whistleblower.